our smartphones can tell us what time it is. It's 1226. They can also keep track of time from hundreds of seconds all the way into the past years and years and years, thousands of years. In fact, this calendar goes back to 4716 BC, and if you're an historian, that's pretty useful. But if you're trying to keep track of biological evolution, smartphones are useless. If you're trying to keep track of a trilobite and what happened to it and its environment more than 250 million years ago, then smartphones are useless. Our hands and our heads evolved over a period of hundreds of millions of years, and they evolved in a particular order. To keep track of that order, we need a timeline with lots and lots of time, a mega calendar that can keep track of all that time. Here is a timeline. Starts at zero, and that's today, and at the present time. And this is a linear timeline, and you know that because from zero to 100, from 100 to 200, there's the same number of years between each one of these tick marks. And that's nice. And our lives are here. You know, some of us are 50 years old, some of us are two years old, and we will probably live into the future there. Now, this is the past in this direction, and each one of these is years ago, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, etc. And the Canterbury Tales is right here, about 600 years ago. Now, that's a linear timeline, but we have to deal in animal evolution and life on Earth evolution with lots and lots of time, not just 100 or 900 years, but we need to deal with billions of years. And so we need to convert this linear timeline to a logarithmic timeline. Now watch the 100 tick mark, and it'll stay the same. All the tick marks will stay the same, but we will relabel them with numbers that allow us to make a logarithmic timeline. And there it is. So the 100 has stayed the same, but we have 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, a million, all the way back to the Big Bang. And uh, this is a lovely thing. All, this is all the past. We're looking into the past. And uh, here where we live again, our lives are there. And the Big Bang origin of the universe, 13.8 billion years ago, is right here, that squiggly mess there. And notice that there's no time before that. That's somehow a sense in which time came into existence at the Big Bang. And here are the Canterbury Tales, about 600 years ago. And then we have the origin of the Sun and Earth, 4.6 billion years ago. And the, what we're most interested in is the origin of life on our Earth, about 4 billion years ago. So this logarithmic timescale really gives us a large dynamic range to arrange things that happened in the past. For example, we've already talked about genealogy. You know, hey, let's talk about my grandparents and my great-grandparents and my great-great-grandparents. And that you can go back to a few hundred, maybe even a thousand years ago if you're an expert genealogist. We also talked about the family of man, human beings, and the origin of human beings about a hundred or two hundred thousand years ago, and how we are all related to each other in that tree. But we also are connected to our hominid ancestors. We talked about that. They go back about two million years. And then we're also primates. Primates have their origin about 20 or 30 or 40 million years ago. In this unit, we'll be talking about animals. We'll be talking about the evolution of animals. And that is a time scale that goes all the way back to about a billion years. So with this timeline, we can keep track of what happened in the past. It helps us to navigate the deep time that holds so many secrets of our dead ancestors who allowed us to become what we are, to force, who forced us to become who we are.